The history of this place is shrouded in myths, folklore and legend. Often it becomes difficult to tell what is real and what is imaginary. However, what cannot be disputed is that the fort at Ranthambore is one of the oldest and most famous in India. It is built at ground 1500 feet above the sea level. The fort itself is 500 feet tall and this rampart is a sheer height of 100 feet. The hillock on which the fort is built is Thumb and the hill in front is Run and the deep ravine in between serving as a natural moat is Bor, hence the name Ranthambore. It is indeed a unique forest fort. Ranthambore, 13 kilometers away from Savai Madhopur in Rajasthan, is an unusual forest fort surrounded by a dense forest. The circular ramparts cover a vast area. Thickets of trees, bushes and undulating terrain keep it very well hidden from the eyes of the enemy. Names of great heroic Rajput warriors like Rana Sangha, Rana Kumba and Hamir Dev are associated with this citadel. Ranthambore is one of the oldest forts in India. It it's, would be dated along with Kalinjar. It is historically one of the oldest. It predates all the Rajput forts and was when the first raiders came into India. It was the bastion between India and Central Asia. It was an enormous fort and, and, and held its ground to protect the plains of India from the deserts. Kutubuddin Aibak was the first Sultan of Delhi to target it. Later, Balban, Alauddin Khilji, and Akbar attacked it. Abul Fazal, one of the legendary nine gems of Akbar's court, had aptly commented about Ranthambore. All other forts appear naked. Only this fort wears a verdant armor of forest. The ballad Hamir Dev Raso sings praise for this fort that held its head high proudly for many centuries. The fort at Ranthambore was conceived and constructed as a forest fort. The dense forest populated by dangerous animals was enough to deter any enemy. But those who dwelt within the ramparts felt that they too were children of forest like the animals and lived harmoniously with them. Today, the sanctuary at Ranthambore is world famous. Those who come to visit the sanctuary do not go back unless they have visited the forest. Dense forest provided the fort with its first line of defense. Then the steep rock confronted the invaders as an almost insurmountable obstacle. Shooting straight up from the deep ravines, the rock is over 200 meters high. The path winding up the hill is strewn with rocks and is narrow and winding.
Ranthambore Fort is one example where one can see how the man-made structures are limited and respond to the natural environment. It uh, relates to the entire terrain, the forest areas that are there. So in fact, this sparseness in built structures and not a domination of the same sort of blends very well with the environment, both climatically, ecologically, as well as aesthetically. Ranthambore was truly invincible in the pre-artillery age. The ramparts were built on the foundations laid on the very edge of hard rock and gained height dramatically. It wasn't easy to overcome this barrier. पहाड़ियों को मिलकर ऊपर बनाने में एक कठिनाई सबसे बड़ी थी कि पत्थर को ले जाना पड़ता था बड़े बड़े आर्टिसन को ले जाना पड़ता था पानी ले जाना जो भी मिडलिंग मटेरियल सब ले जाना लेकिन सामरिक दृष्टि से पहाड़ की ऊंचाई से वो ज़्यादा कंट्रोल कर सकते थे दुर्ग के दरवाजे एक दरवाजे से डिफेंस फिर सेकेंड लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस तीसरे लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस उसके ऊपर आते थे और उसके अंदर ये पहाड़ी जो जंगल के पेड़ जैव जंतु हैं उसमें घुसना आसान काम नहीं था Even today, it amazes visitors how these walls were constructed in those times. The walls of the rampart are thick and wide enough for mounted soldiers to ride out on watch. The best defense for the fort at Ranthambore was provided by Mother Nature herself. This was the dense forest surrounding it. But that was not all. The invader, if he somehow crossed this forest, was confronted with four difficult passes and 84 deep ravines, which served as natural moats. And if he somehow crossed these, he was confronted yet with man-made barriers. There are massive gates like this with spikes to deter elephants attacking the fort. There were also underground passages and sharp turns at every step. The fort was virtually impregnable, invincible. There are many roads that zigzag up the hill, passing through a number of strong gates. One has to climb up and down stairs at several places. The road turns sharply as we enter. A tower with a platform protects this entrance from where the sentries could scan the horizon. Though the gates are primarily built for defense, they were decorated with fine stone carvings. They are adorned with arches and crinellions. The pillars standing along the sides have images of birds and animals along with motifs encountered in Hindu temples. This fort, with its ramparts and gates built following the canons of Hindu Vastu Shastra, is considered the best example of pre-Islamic Rajput architecture in India. Ranathambhor Fort has elements. Each fort of this kind acquires layers of different times through which it passes. And you can see the various layers which the fort of Ranathambhor has acquired. And it has become from a patently military defensive fort to a fort which has incorporated other elements of a, of a fort palace complex or if I can say a fort palace city complex. <laughs> The 
Amir Mahal is the finest example of pre-Islamic Rajput architecture in India. Four stories are built underground and three more floors stand above them. Red sandstone brought from Karoli was used here. Tunneled corridors and beautiful verandas are its characteristic features. Carved stone pillars and ceilings remind of the ornamentation seen in Hindu temples. Amir Mahal has been decorated simply but tastefully. The simple elegance of Hamir Mahal leaves a deep, moving impact on the visitors. Ranthambore was a new, strong, defendable fort which attracted a lot of people, including a lot of people from the old Ajmer Shakambari Empire, that region, who had fled in different directions. Because of the protection offered, the merchants came there, scholars come there. You have shops, you have houses. <laughs> In 1293, Alauddin Khilji sent Ulug Beg to capture Rantambol. The long siege depleted the stock of food and water. Hamir Dev was constrained to perform a shaka. According to bards who served as court chroniclers, a traitor facilitated the entry of enemy forces. When Hamir was engaged in a fierce battle, rumor spread that he was killed. The queens ascended the funeral pyre. Hamir returned after repelling the attack to see all he loved reduced to cinders. Heartbroken, he ended his life by beheading himself in the Shiva temple. The traitor Rana Mal continues to be hated and reviled till date. A grotesquely large head in his likeness is kept by the entrance where many pelt it with stones even to this day. Barely a building stands in these precincts that does not bear the scars of warfare. Many have been totally destroyed. Scenes of brutal devastation greet us everywhere. It can be easily imagined what a heavy price was paid by innocent civilians for the ambition and pride of their rulers. In 1516, Mahmud Khilji, the Sultan of Malwa, occupied Ranthambore. 
but Rana Sangha soon reclaimed it. Later, he attacked Gujarat and vanquished the Sultan of Mandu. The tussle of Rana Sangha with Babur, the founder of the Mughal Empire, continued like a seesaw. Rana never turned to retreat from the battlefield, nor did he accept defeat, and the long period was punctuated with truces and resumption of hostilities. Badal Mehal, literally meaning the Cloud Palace, seems aptly named as it affords a panoramic view of the sanctuary spread out at the foot of the hill. This residential complex was designed in a manner to keep those who used it cool and refreshed at the height of scorching summer. Some historians have opined that those who dwelt here lived a hard life, facing sudden death at every step. They had neither time nor resources for a life of leisure or pursuit of pleasure. That's the reason why Badal Mahal has minimal decorations. Small alcoves are the only adornments on the walls. At some places, fading traces of paintings in early Rajput style can be noticed. Akbar attacked Ranthambore in February 1569. The artillery was set up on a high hill, facing the fort to launch a fusillade. Whenever the control over this fort was contested and a battle was fought, people suffered greatly. There was a loss of life and the buildings were damaged. Wherever you look around, you see ruins, ruins of pavilions and palaces. There are temples here within these represents, Hindu and Jain, as well as dargahs of Sufi saints. People throng in their hundreds even today to pay homage to these. The old Ganesh temple, built on the top of the plateau, attracts devotees from all over the land. It enjoys a reputation that equals that of any other historic structure. People who believe in the fort, and, and, and this is the joy of the forts of India, is the legends that go with them. And this one is particularly special because you invite the Ganesh, you send a wedding invitation to the Ganesh Mandir. So it is probably the postman who climbs every day to the Ganesh Mandir is possibly the most overworked postman in India today. Because all wedding invitations go for those who believe in it. And this is a temple which has some relationship with blessing marriages. <laughs> The 
the ancient Jain temple has a huge gallery of beautiful statues of Tirthankars. This indicates beyond doubt that in time gone by, this site was considered equally sacred by people professing different faiths and drew those who wished to perform austerities. Because there are not too many structures, so it has a very loose planning, so you don't really need to go in a structured way and experience palaces like you do in other forts. It's a very organic kind of setting, so you just enter there and you can sort of explore. <music> The fort has many large ponds fed by main springs. Padmavati Talab is one of the prominent water bodies. These water tanks provided drinking water for the residents during long sieges. Some buildings on their banks were designed as pleasure pavilions. This fort is a priceless part of our heritage and its preservation poses complex challenges. The conservation challenges come from its scale as a whole. Also in terms of structures, I guess one would look at restoring whatever is there. And one of the most important aspects of conservation would be interpretation. And another important conservation challenge would be its natural conservation, you know, which is already there in the surroundings in the forest area. So also looking at the flora and the fauna within the fort. This grand canopy was built by Hamir Rai in memory of his father. It has 32 pillars to indicate that he ruled for as many years. The memorial dedicated to Rana Jaising reminds us more of his son, Hamir Dev, standing as a testimony in stone to his valor and love of arts. Some visitors have defaced it by inscribing their names and graffiti on its walls. This canopy, like other buildings in the fort compound, has suffered due to neglect. The Grand Fort, sprawling out merging with surrounding forest speaks volumes of the grit and determination of those who built it. Never humbled even in defeat, it is a symbol of the indomitable spirit of the Rajput warriors. <laughs> 